Johnson mm -hmm. and Nelson. Here. <clears throat> All right, do we have any additions to the agenda? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make an addition to the agenda. Um, I'd like to request, uh, as a representative of Ward 3, uh, that LaVon Randall be uh, given the opportunity to speak. Okay. I'll second that. Second by Mark. Any further discussion? We'll vote. Mark? Yeah. Scott? Yes. Bill? Yes. Doyle? Yes. Okay. So, Andy. Minutes from 1214 to 2015. I'll make a motion for the minutes. Motion by Mark. Second. Second by Scott. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes.
and I know that this is a great opportunity for learning and growth as you all can choose to be different. It's a new year. You can choose to be different. And so we must address this because this affects our city. And it affects everybody. Everybody. And a solution must be found immediately because everybody should want to learn how to be better in supporting their communities. And sometimes, sometimes people just don't know how. You know, the unknown can scare people. The unknown just, they, 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 they don't know how, so then they act like they know how. You know, the fear of the unknown. So tonight I want to give everyone the opportunity to consider several things and seriously look at these things from both a community view and a personal view in your personal life view. How each and every action that you do, your decisions, your words, the thoughts you think and the, everything that comes out of your mouth and everything that happens within your life affects the legacy that you leave behind for not only yourself and your reputation, but who you are. Who you are. Your family and your children and your grandchildren will be affected by what you do every single day and what you say every single day. Long after you're gone, so what I'm going to say tonight doesn't require any responses. In fact, I'm going to ask nobody to respond, nobody interrupt. We don't, as adults, we don't interrupt each other. We all know that. And so I've made it a point to get to know a lot of you. I, I love getting to know people. I love getting to know. It's not. I, I just love people. I love getting to know people and and um, finding out more about them. And and I know that. Positions in government and positions in city, government, federal government. Um, I've, like I say, I've worked with law enforcement. I know that's certainly not an easy job. Cause I've been there, done that. It's not easy, but it is simple. So all of you as servants, you serve this community. You do not serve yourself. You do not serve any personal agenda. You do not serve your pride. You do not serve your ego. The position in which you serve, you are obligated to listen to the public for which you serve. And so, as you are obligated in that situation, you're obligated also to listen with an open mind. To be proactive, not reactive. It's easy to be reactive in life, isn't it? You're obligated to be proactive, not arrive with decisions already made, not arrive with coercion in place, thinking, okay, this is how we're going to work this thing, but arrive with an open heart and an open mind to listen to all angles and make an objective choice and a proactive decision for the interest of the community, not any one single person or your own self. So somewhere along the line, this simple rule has gotten all messed up, and we have to correct it. And so this community is in the window, we don't interrupt, this community is in the window of time that we can grow and we can really be a part of what we are on the threshold of building a great time that I'm this community that can really be on the, the threshold of growing. And so we've already lost some businesses because of this. And we all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. <clears throat> but we're so fortunate and blessed to have a community that cares and wants success in every aspect. And so I just ask you to reevaluate. We all make mistakes. And this is a time that you get to draw the line in the sand and say, you know what? We've all made mistakes. 
Let's, let's just be 100% honest from this day forward. We're going to have the highest honor. <clears throat> we're going to have the highest standards of integrity. And we, are, we as a community are kind, forgiving people. And excellence is not to be construed as perfection. <clears throat> not a one of us is perfect. And those who think they are are the furthest from it. Wouldn't you agree in life? So draw the line in the sand, knowing you can't change the past, but what you can do is affect the future. For yourself, most importantly, gang, your families. Don't go to your grave having made crappy decisions and going to your grave with lack of integrity. Don't do it. Please don't do it. I'm just about done. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. We have a 705 hearing. Uh, just need to mark that it's 712. So 705 hearings for renewal of the city garbage licenses, Novak, sanitary service, Christmas sanitation, or just sanitation. Teresa? Um, every year. <coughs> Garbage haul haulers that are licensed with the city need to get a one-year license with the city. They are up on the 14th of this month. We ask them to submit information as far as the rates, the size of their trucks. Um, that information is on the table for you guys to review. They've submitted all that, plus their application and fee to parent. And the three current garbage haulers, Norman <coughs> Sanitation, Crescent Sanitation, and RBS Sanitation are asking to renew their licenses. All right. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, city garbage license renewals. Second. Motion by Mark, second by Bill. Any discussion? Uh, a vote. Mark? Yeah. Doyle? Yes. Scott? Yes. Bill? Yes. All right. So we have the Sheriff's Deputy Report. Here. Good evening. Good evening. For traffic enforcement this last month, uh, kind of saw an influx on eastbound speeders on Highway 38 about 2nd Street. Mostly people from out of town that are kind of going a different route. They said that they were usually using the interstate, so they weren't used to the, uh, the slower traffic through Hartford. So um, got them slowed down as best I could. And then uh, with that, we had um, kind of an increase in no insurance tickets as well on some of those traffic stops. Uh, for special attention, uh, kind of continued from November as well. Uh, quite a few fraud cases, just with all the holidays and a lot of shopping online. A lot of people's credit and debit cards getting, um, you know, with the identity theft. So, uh, and then also with uh, all the snow we've had, we've had I think four or five ticketing uh, times for the snow alerts. Uh, so, some more snow tickets. But is there when you say more, some more? Are we seeing quite a bit more, or? Um, the one on the weekend, I think Craig said was quite a bit more than normal. Uh, I think the deputies, I think it was on Saturday, correct? Yep. Uh, the, the day shift deputies were busy with accidents uh, when that was called in, and then I, I, it was passed on to night shift, and I'm not sure if they were busy or if they forgot, but I don't think any tickets were issued that day, but that was the only increase, otherwise it's been about that 10-ish uh, area on all the other ones, so. And that's all I have for you guys. Do you have any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Chief Schumer. Schumer. Chief? That's all I'm going to There he is. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Um, a wrap up of uh, December, we had 19 total calls on the department, uh, six within the city limits of Hartford. Uh, it's a little bit slower month, which is always good. Ended up the year with 266 total calls. Uh, December, we had a business meeting on the 9th, uh, fire training on the 14th on electrical hazards, EMS training on the 21st for trauma. January, uh, we had a board meeting last night. 
We have a business meeting coming up at uh, 7 p.m. on the 13th. <coughs> EMS training on the 18th on medical behavioral tendencies. <coughs> and then we have CPR training for fire and EMS on the 19th and the 27th of this month. Uh, for 2016, the uh, leadership in the department, a few small changes. I will be continuing on as chief for 2016. Uh, first assistant fire is Adam Erickson. Uh, first assistant rescue, Connor Borgerms. Second assistant fire, Travis Helbig. Second assistant rescue, Linda Hartman. Treasurer, James Buss. And secretary, Stacy Graves. Uh, these seven officers will comprise the exec executive board of Hartford Fire Department. Do we um, pause you there? So, Karen, did you get all that, or do you, um, do you want to get a list from? I'll get it. To them. Yeah, okay. just get, get, get a list. Perfect. Um, again, I'd like to ask uh, for help from all the citizens of Hartford in clearing fire hydrants. Um, we're dispatched to a possible structure fire in the last week in town here. Our members had to spend valuable time shoveling out the nearest hydrant to gain access to it, you know, costing valuable time. You know, luckily, it was not needed in this instance, but we don't like to rely on luck when it comes to life and property safety. So, you know, if we can somehow get the word out to citizens, what, whether it's on their property or neighbors helping neighbors just to help keep these hydrants clear, that, that's valuable time savings. Absolutely. What, what do we do? Do we do anything? To Proactive there, Teresa. With we put it in our newsletter that we send out with all the water bills. Can we put it on the marquee as well? And we can put it up on Facebook. <clears throat> so might as well put up on 91 too. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Yep, I'm um, finishing up 2015, I'd like to offer a few words of thanks. Now, first off, I'd like to thank uh, all our members. Uh, these 40 men, men and women make sacrifice, sacrifices each and every day to help those in need. Words alone cannot express, express the respect and honor it is to be part of this team. I'd also like to thank the families of each of our members. It's not our members alone who make sacrifices. Your support is the key to this department's strength. I'd like to thank the business community, businesses in our community. By allowing our members to leave their jobs and help others in their time of need, you're showing to all your business's commitment to this community. Lastly, I would like to thank everyone who helped support Hartford Area Fire and Rescue. We appreciate the public safety partnerships we have with the city, county, and township entities we work with. Most of all, I'd like to thank the many businesses, families, and individuals who help support us through direct donations or support of our fundraisers. It is our joy and privilege to serve our citizens through prevention programs and emergency response. It is our commitment to you to be continually improving our department, i.e. your department. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Chief? Have you had a chance to meet with Teresa and Craig with the uh ISO meeting last night. Last night. We kicked off last night. Uh, you know, the process is, is beginning. It's not going to be a quick process. Uh, right now, our timeline is looking at probably early 2017 for the next reevaluation by the time we make sure we have in place to have the best possible result. And when, when do you guys take delivery of the ladder truck? Still looking around uh, April 1. April 1. And that uh, was building? Yes. <coughs> and you have an empty bay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else for the Chief? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Chief. Right, thank you. <coughs> uh, before we move into old business, I just got uh, just a quick statement here I'm going to make to the Council. Um, I'd like to take a little bit of time, uh, being this is the first meeting of the year, and I'd like to say that I'm hopeful. Um, I'm hopeful that Hartford will continue to grow and the people will continue to move to our town, shop in our town, and the businesses will follow. Everyone in Hartford in the Greater Sioux Falls area is well aware of the events of 2015. I'm not one to dwell in the past. And I'm asking that the council work together to conduct the city's business. We have a lot to get done. Uh, 
There's an EDD position which you're currently working to fill, and now a finance officer position to fill as well. Uh, city employees are waiting to find out whether they receive a Christmas bonus or raises for 2016. With this in mind, I'll be asking the council to review pay scales and benefits and make appropriate adjustments. In my opinion, some of the city employees are not being paid commensurate with uh, city employees in neighboring communities who have similar positions and responsibilities. In order to keep the employee review process moving, I, I performed the evaluation of the three department heads on December 30th. The council can feel free to review those at your leisure. I will publicly state that Teresa Seidel, Craig Wagner, and Karen Wilbur all do a great job for the citizens of Hartford. They and their immediate staff keep the city running, and I appreciate the work that they do. To conclude, I would simply like to say that it's now 2016, and I'd like to encourage the council to do the work that they were elected to do. I'm hopeful that we, with the four councilmen seated here tonight, that we can do just that. That being said, old business. We have to discuss the special election ordinance. Okay, well with the resignation of our last two council members, Derek Arden and Bortnow, we had found out that there's two ways to fill uh, vacancy on the council. You can either by appointment fill it or you can do a special election. Subsequently, we found out in order to do a special election, you have to have an ordinance in place before those vacancies occur, which the city does not. Um, so on December 1st, I think it was Scott that made a motion to go ahead and draft an ordinance to allow the city to do a special election if their vacancy occurred. I haven't drafted that ordinance yet because I have since found out some more news that Karen has confirmed with Kia with the State Department that basically if you draft an ordinance to do a special election to fill a vacancy, you are bound then to every time there's a vacancy to have a special election. You don't get the choice to fill it by appointment. So the way the state law reads is you can fill the vacancy by appointment or by special election. And it's an either or thing. You don't get to choose once that occurs. So if we put an ordinance on the books, we are obligated to every time there's a vacancy, say we just have election in May, in June somebody resigns, we have to right again have another election. Say in October somebody resigns, we have to have another election. So I guess my question is the council, and you're giving off that, or, or you're giving up that option to fill it by appointment. My question to the council, do you want to proceed with drafting an ordinance for a special election, or do you want to keep the option open of being able to appoint? Scott? I'll speak first, obviously, because uh, uh, we didn't get to know that, obviously. Yep. We didn't, we yeah. didn't know. So, I'm glad we found that. Um, given that circumstance and the criteria that could happen in the future, um, my opinion on a special election, one or the other, you know, um, I, I, I'll just protract that for like a better term. Um, uh, to have the levity to be able to uh, move quickly and efficiently, I think would be deterred uh, quite, quite dramatically if we had to go through that. And you also touched on the expense uh, that, uh, that would be accrued during that time. So, so um, I uh, have had a change of heart for as far as special election um, and would endorsed to continue and with appointment if uh, the criteria meets. Yeah. Mark, any words? I don't know. I see the uh, I see the benefit in both. On the one hand, with the special election, you literally put it in the hands of the public. There's costs associated with that, timing, but that's, I mean, that's the people's will. If it's, if it's an appointment, because now, explain to me this, Larry, is the situation that we had a few months ago for, uh, for Brad's seat. If we made that appointment, would that appointment be till the next election? Or would the council literally appoint for the remainder of the term? It's, it's next well, election. everything's to the next election. Yeah. All appointments are till the next election. 
And is there any other, there's no other cities that have an ordinance like this? No, I did check, I put in my report, I did check with other cities to see if anybody else had adopted a special election ordinance, and none of them had. Um, the ones that responded basically kind of cited what's been, uh, they, they haven't adopted because of the cost associated with the elections, the time, you know, it's just more cumbersome to hold an election each time there's a vacancy and they want to be able to just appoint somebody to keep the city, you know, business yeah. moving, so. As of now, I haven't come across a city that has the ordinance. I, I'm fine leaving it the way it is. Okay. Bill? I have nothing to add. So, I guess I'm okay either way. I mean, I'm okay. kind of with Marcus and the benefits of both sides. I don't think we have any consensus to move forward with that. So. Okay, I guess that's what I need to get from you right so. <coughs> New business, 2016 other contract. So, Mary, did we get minutes approved or did I miss that? Yeah. You did? You were second. Did I really? How about uh, payment of bills today? There was not one there. That's why I missed it. All right, thank you very much. Okay. So, 2016 audit contracts. Um, in your packet, there's a contract from Quam and Berger, and they would audit the firm that did their last audit this year. And it's going to be it says 2016 audit contract, but they'll be, for this year, they will do our 2015 audit in this year. Um, basically, the contract is similar to our previous one with them. There's just a slight um, difference in the amount they'll be charging. They charge us 7,500 this last, or 7,200 this last year, and they're gonna charge 7,500 this year, so it's different for 300, which, it's fairly normal. I mean, when we had Gary Larson, each year seemed to have a little bit of a slight increase, I'm sure, due to associated costs, you know, rising each year. Um, Palmberger, you know, I, I believe they did a good job for us. Um, it's always hard to go from water you've had many, many years and knows exactly how the city runs and what you do to a new one, but um, they were good to work with. They were here for about a week and um, didn't have any issues or problems with them. I think everything came out okay with the audit and I would recommend that we continue on with them. Um, now that we've already got acquainted with them and they know how you know, to do problems, I, I think we'd have a good re working relationship with them. Okay. Did we check with Bus County? Bus cannot do audits. That's what it was. Yeah. He is there, licensed to do audits. He did our annual report that's last it. year. Yeah. Um, I did, after he did our annual report last year, he says he won't do a future one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just because of the time and cumbersome, and that he doesn't do any other municipalities, so. Well, and I would, Mark, I'd caution having anybody done, do it in town, that could possibly benefit or somewhere like that. This is, this, this agency is totally outside of Hartford. That's what, that's, let's go down to the council as well. I think that, to be totally unbiased and be looking for an agency. Yeah, James was real good. You know, we had to get our <coughs> report. He was good to step in and <coughs> do that for us. Um, but like I said, there's a lot involved with it and he doesn't do any other municipalities. So he, probably, he had indicated that he wouldn't continue doing it and he's not licensed to do the audit. So we Well, I knew there, I, I thought last year that he, that he did something and we farmed out something and I just couldn't remember. Yeah, he did the annual. Yeah, part of it, <clears throat> which I have asked Palm and Berglund to submit a contract to do the annual report too for us, and we haven't got that yet because Gary Larson used to do both of them for us. Um, I think that makes it a lot easier. The same firm is doing the annual report and is doing the audit. Once again, they know what the city's done throughout the year, why you've done it, and it just makes it easier transition. I'll make a motion to. Uh approve the 2016 audit contract with Guam and Berglund. I'll second. Second one, Bob. Any further discussion? One vote. Mark? Yeah. Scott? Yep. Bill? Yes. Bill? Yes. Okay, you said discussion of bike trail along Holton Road. Okay, well, um, Craig had brought this up the last meeting. Everyone knows uh, the county is going to redo the road from Highway 38 North. When they had their meeting here in town, Craig met with them and um, they had discussed the possibility of adding a bike path along the west side of it. Um, they, the county seemed receptive to it. 
Um, we had asked them if their um, engineers could get together a rough cost estimate so we know what we're looking at, if that's something we want to pursue, because if we do, now is definitely the time to do it, because they will be in there with the crews anyway, doing the dirt work and the tearing up of it and whatnot. So we did get a cost estimate from the county. I just got it yesterday. I talked to Jason Reeves with the county. Um, their engineer, which is JSA, um, submitted a bid for to put, and this would be to put on the west side of the road, Fulton Road. It's a 10 foot asphalt trail. Um, and follow, you know, the same width as our other trails in town. The total estimate they came up with would be about 203,000, but they noted that the county was gonna pay um, for some of that grading and dirt work. They're gonna pay for the engineering fees, and um, they'll also pay for the <coughs> contingency. So what they're looking at what the city would have to look at for a mountain be about 145,000 roughly okay. in there. Um, they said they are still willing to entertain a cost share with the city on that. So they are still willing to help out more, help out more if need be. They realize we have limited funds and we run a budget too. They really want to see the project done also, they said, you know, hmm. it's a plus plus for the county and the city. Like I said, now's the time to do it. So. I guess my question to the council is, what would you like me to suggest the county to come back with a, a cost percentage? You know, me and Craig talked a little bit about it. <laughs> you know, we're very lucky the county's working with us on this, and it's definitely going to be a benefit for the city. You know, I guess our thoughts is to maybe offer a, a 70-30 or a 60-40. Yes, yeah, that's what I was saying, like the 70-30 would be because um, they, they, they definitely said they would entertain <clears throat> still on us. I'm of the opinion that we do it regardless of the cost share percentage. Because I, I agree. There, I agree there, will, there will never be a time. Yeah. Two years from now, we will not be able to build it for 145. But, but if we can get a bit more money out there, we'll oh, sure. It. But I mean, if it's a 50-50 split, it's a no-brain. If it's a 70-30 split, it's a no-brain. If it's a 60% us and 40% them, it's still a no-brain. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I agree if it's 145. I mean, honestly, because they're fixing that issue down there with the drainage too, right? Oh, yeah, that. they're basing out some drainage issues there were curving and close to the highway. Yeah, they're, they're correcting that. So how do we go back to them and talk to them about what they're willing to do. How do well, I said I would talk with the council tonight, get some direction from you guys, what your thoughts are. I First of all, one of the consensus that you want to do the project, and I said now's the time to do it, and I, I think <coughs> we definitely have support to do it. Okay. Um, I It would be my opinion that this council uh, makes a motion to do this project and let the city staff negotiate with the county on the best cost share that they can do. Is that how we need to proceed with the motion? Or are we just, are we just asking for to go back to the county to? If you can give us the ability to negotiate with them, then that saves us the two weeks. Because they do want to move forward with this, want to get their engineers going so, on this. So you need a motion to, to negotiate? Yeah. I'll make a motion that city staff can negotiate with the county moving forward with the cold and bike path. I'll second. second. Um, real quick, like <coughs> your get the call discussion. Have we yeah. talked to Troy at all about this? Yes, the bike committee, um, they were aware of the initial meeting out there and there was a few emails going back and forth because Warren had emailed and said, has anybody asked the county that, about doing a bike path? And I let them know that Craig had initially talked with them when we are in discussion, they were gonna get us this estimate. And yes, of course they want the yeah. bike path. The, uh, they definitely are in support of it and what we can do. So how, how does that affect the homeowners on that side of the... It'll all be in right away, so we won't be taking, you know, any land from them. Um, one, one other thing to note is um, they asked about the maintenance of the trail. You know, the only thing is they asked us, like the state asked, that the city would maintain the trail just like we... You know, the county doesn't want to have to come out here and sweep the snow off it or mow around it. Yeah, and yeah, and like so there will be a future maintenance agreement with it. So then what about... I, I know there's some variances provided up there about sidewalks. 
but now there's a bike, a potential bike path that that goes in. Is that an improvement? Now they got to put sidewalks and bike paths in that development. This would be on the back side of everybody's property. But you got the corner lots that have coming off the of sewer, coming yeah. off sewer, yeah. and coming yeah. off of uh, fairway. Yeah. Those ones are. I'd have to check to see how the variance. Because I thought at one time it was awarded that if a if there were improvement like a bike trail go through there, or whatever, we'd want sidewalks in there for. I think it was. I think I said I think it was on the one we just issued like a year ago, yeah. three years ago. That was one of the conditions. It allowed people to get on the bike trail and get off. Right. Yeah. yeah. That they'd have to install the sidewalk and. Yeah. So, so I think yeah, I double checked. That, that's what the variance reads. Then once the bike trail goes in, they have to. And is this goes all the way up to Park Key? It's going to go up to Ninth Street. Up to Ninth Street. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ninth Street. Yeah. Ninth yeah. Street. So yeah, so you'd be able to get off Ninth oh, okay. and Park Key. They wanted to take it. They had talked about safe, you know, just going sage home, but they wanted to include that party area so that would, this would take it all the way up wow. to 9th Street. So go 9th Street and Highway 38. Yep. In the event that some residents have to put sidewalk in, I don't think is a deal breaker because I can make you a list of people that put sidewalk in and we didn't get a gift from the county or a bike trail. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, so, I'm, just, I'm just making it known that I think yes. Yeah, that's, but, and that's not to say that, that's not to say that planning and zoning or or the city council for that matter can't, can't wait. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. I'm just making it aware of the council. Yeah. I think there's some variances there. I think there's two properties that would affect. Okay, so we have a motion by Mark, second by Scott. Scott. Any further discussion? We'll vote. Scott? Yes. Bill? Yes. Doug? Yes. Mark? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then correspondence. Okay. We'll move into reports. Mitch. Good evening. Thank you. Um, starting with the water model, we had the uh, model completed and final look deliverable and then sent down to Teresa. Um, we'll be reviewing those with her the next week or so when we kind of get freed up a little bit more, it sounds like. Um, the pool project, we've got our construction documents done. We're ready to advertise that project, so we'd like a motion to be able to put those out for bid. I'll make a motion to put the pool project out for bid. <coughs> I'll second. Thanks, Scott. Second by Doyle. Any discussion on that? <coughs> All right. We'll vote. Mark? Yeah. Bill? Yes. Doyle? Yes. Scott? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mike Frank and Trail, we are still waiting on design agreements for that. Um, we've called down to the DOT several times asking about that project, and it's just hung up and on their end. Uh, so we can't start until we get those back in them, so we're still pursuing those. What, what's, I mean, this has been hung up for a long time. Yeah. Long time. Long time. I your federal issue, government you know, hard at work. I mean, I called, there's, is it Jerry that we are Jerry, supposed you know, to Jerry, no, that taken over for Nancy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've mean, contacted their office several times, and it's just something that's hung up somewhere above down the but I don't know if you've heard anything different, but that's all I've done. We'll continue to follow up with them, but I mean, our hands are kind of tied as far as we go. We can't start until we get that notice received from them. So. That's state DOT? Yeah. And they're being held up by federal DOT? I don't know. I really don't know what it is inside there. That's what we don't know. So maybe, I mean, you're just going to check in with them again and have another report next meeting? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep checking with them. Um, South Main Edition, we have gotten some new drawings from those guys. They're going to uh, put out a catch basin to that area that uh, was holding water. They're going to do that right away in the spring. So we have those plans on file now, and everything looks good there as far as improvements that they're proposing. Um, they did have a plat of some of the lots that were further north of that area, which I believe has gone through P and Z now. Um, so we should be able to move forward on that project, I guess. 
Um, that's all I've got. If there's any questions? What's the status with the floodplain? We just received comments back uh, last week or the week before. So we have to uh, make changes to our document and send them back off to them for a final, a final draft of that document. That's to the Fed or to the state? It's to FEMA. So the Fed. The federal, yeah. All right. Any other questions for Mitch? What's the turnaround on that? 90 days. From now? Yep. Really? Yep. Remind me to ask him in 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mitch. Yep. Craig. Uh, streets, pretty much just been uh, plowing streets, cleaning up intersections. We have started pulling some of the sides uh, where the mailboxes and that are. I have to make some more room for snow in the future. Uh, I've been hauling that out. We'll continue to work on them as we run through the season here. Um, all the equipment's running good at this time. Christmas decorations, as soon as we get a little break between moving snow and 30 mile an hour winds, we'll get the Christmas decorations down. We did get the lights off the trees today, except for the taller ones, the pine tree one. Um, still got, well, we still got plenty of salt sand for right now, we will be hauling more in here as soon as we get a break. Uh, water and sewer, we did finish discharging pond number three, we did grab samples from it after we moved the water around again. Um, our ammonia is up just a little bit high, so we'll be grabbing another sample here in a couple weeks to see if it's dropping or what it's doing. If not, we'll just have to wait until spring before we can discharge. Um, be working on the end of the year reports for DNR. I've got uh, stage two done today and sent in. And I just got the DMRs you have to finish up and get them sent into them. Park and pool, um, we're gonna be working on the ice rink as soon as we get some time. Uh, we'll have to clean the snow off at first, get the ground to freeze before we even start doing anything. It's been too nice and then all of a sudden uh, <laughs> Christmas breaks and everything like that and guys on vacation, it's been kind of, just been a chore just getting snow removal done. Um, along with snow removal, I guess, uh, our part-time guy had an accident this weekend. He slipped on some steps and broke some ribs, broke his elbow and his wrist. So oh, we're, yeah. we have no more part-time guy. You didn't do that out front here, right? You know, no. he's at his own place. <laughs> he called me and told me about it. I thought, oh, God. <laughs> well, but, so we are short. Um, we'll be back to our four guys, which we'll get by. I mean, we last two snow events, we were down to three people anyway, so. You don't need to advertise? Or? By the time we get it advertised and like that, we're almost done with the season. So we're like, we'll just run with the four and okay. keep ahead of it. So. And that is all I have, unless somebody has something for me. That was well, we brought up the last meeting, that truck with the city logo. That been They're all, yep. Yep. Any other <coughs> questions for Craig? All right, thank you, Craig. Yep. Baron. I'm at the end of the month and the year. I've been working on month end, quarter end, and now tomorrow and the rest of the week. Work on the year end reports, W2s, 1099s, trying to get all that wrapped up. Um, been busy showing Rhonda and Teresa what I can before I'm done on Friday. Um, just kind of recap the highlights of the revenues for the month of December and the balances as of the end of November for the general fund revenue and expenses. Um, a reminder, I don't know if anyone's interested in going to that um, day of the legislator that I told you about a couple weeks ago, but need to know by next council meeting if you'd want to or not to get you registered so um, let's let the office know if you want to um, and just the calendar of events for you and we have an election date to set pardon me you want to discuss that or Teresa do you got it I, I was just reminding we need to set the election yeah. date <laughs> and then the election date um, normally the municipal elections are typically held on the second Tuesday in April which would be April 12th we're going to have four positions on the ballot. Um, Ward one, Ryan Bortnam's position, that term is expiring. Ward two, Doyle's position is expiring and Scott Nelson's term. And then we'll also have to fill Ward three from Brad's vacancy. Which will be a one year. Which would be a one year, yeah. yes. <clears throat> Yeah. So now it'll come up next year. Um, and 
if we, if we do set it at April 12th, um, we can start circulating petitions January 29th, and then the deadline to file petitions with the office is February 26th. Make a motion to set the uh, election date for April 12th, along with the uh, dispersion of dates previously mentioned. I'll second that. <clears throat> by Scott, second by Mark. No further discussion? Any discussion? No, we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And Teresa, I have the city administrative report. Okay, just a couple updates on the EDD position. Um, I'm just I'm continuing to fill any phone calls and update Channel 99. December was kind of slow, slow. There wasn't a whole lot of activity going on. We didn't have any RFIs come in. HADC, since the last meeting, had a board meeting on the 18th. Um, did not have any meeting on the 25th or the first of the holidays there. They um, are discussing the transfer of the city lots um, to them and then subsequently to the elevator. Um, and also, at their last meeting, had Bob Nielsen and Crystal Waltner come in and discuss the Libby Hartford website, kind of went through it of what different updates are needed to be done and if there's any corrections that needed to be done. And I think everybody's kind of on the same page as far as that goes. So they're trying to get that updated and improved and get all the pertinent information on it. The chamber, the last meeting that I'm aware of they had was December 8th was the meeting. Um, their next meeting is going to be this coming Tuesday, January 12th at 7 p.m. I put in my report at Sunshine.